Hey everybody, I am Charlie Smith and welcome to Savannah Music Chit Chat. We have a good show for you today. Actually, my old guitar player that I played for 30 plus years for Toxic Oscar, Stephen Prescott, is in the house. What's up, brother? All right, glad yeah. to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Glad you, for you to be here. Let's jump head dive right into it, my brother. Where did it take off for you at music? Back before dirt, uh, I grew up in Birmingham, started playing in a school band. Uh, didn't even start playing guitar until I was 18, sang in a band. Then we moved over here in 74, and uh, like I said, been playing a little about a year at the time, and somehow got introduced to Buddy Corns. We started trying to put together a band. It was Buddy, uh, myself, uh, Chris Driggers on drums, Jeff Lane on bass, and Ronnie Owens on keyboard. And we actually played in the shed where I keep my tractors in Bloomingdale at the house. One thing led to another. We changed people a couple of times, played some battles of the bands, won most of them. Then in 79, changed people again that, that became Ajna. Mm -hmm. It was David Baldwin, myself, Will Griffiths, uh, Kenneth Patrick on drums, and Mike Crawford on bass, mm -hmm. and David Steinhauser singing lead. And we stayed together probably about five or six years. I think David Baldwin left first to pursue something else. We wound up with Brian Paul, who kind of hung around the band running sound, this or that and the other. I showed him some stuff and then he just passed me like I was not there <laughs> from about the time he was 14 or 15. And uh, next thing you knew, he was our lead guitar player. And uh, we did mostly original music from 79 till 89. Brian and Mike Crawford decided they were gonna leave and pursue another idea they had, Checkpoint Charlie. Mm -hmm, I remember. And, uh, uh, our drummer at the time was Glenn Smith. He mm -hmm. came on board. We had, uh, first we had Kenneth Patrick, Kenneth left. We had Randy Clark, who is You're now singer our now. singer. Yeah. Uh, then he left and we wound up with Glenn Smith. Mm -hmm. uh, stayed for a number of years. Then Glenn decided to leave. That's when you came on board. Yep. And ran everybody off. I ain't kidding you, man. Promptly ran everybody off. It man. was uh, wound up with Jim Fogarty and Jerry Lentini. Decided to rename the band Toxic Oscar because it wasn't Ajna anymore. Had a great time for many years. Yes, we did, man. Yeah, wrote a lot of stuff. Jimbo was an excellent sure guitar player, excellent songwriter. You know, it's just gone on and on. Uh, the personnel changes through the years, and the only constant would be Will and I. We've been together longer than all five of my marriages put together. 40 uh, plus years. I 43 believe. or four wow. years, yeah. something like that. That's a, that's a long time, man. Let me tell you, in some days it feels even longer than that. Glenn Smith came back. Brian, uh, we parted company with Brian here the beginning of the year, actually, looking for uh, another guitar player. We found, uh, we tried a couple of people, but we wound up with a guy from Pennsylvania named Wiley Congdon who's just all around good egg. He's, he's a great player, he's very clean and concise, his sense of humor is fabulous. We just, and we're still doing it. After all this time, we're like the thing that cannot be killed. Having a good time. Man, I tell you what, boy, do we have some good times, brother. I, uh, I think back on it, man, and you just, just real quick to tell you how I feel. I learned so much from you, brother. Um, my music career, started with Chris Stubbs calling you and they and you told Chris you need, they needed a drummer. I can't and, remember how that happened. Yep, yeah, you I called didn't. Chris and Chris called me and he said, this is your chance to play in your first you know, band like this, man, and they're good. And I'll never forget, y'all gave me the CD. We had Rush and Yes and you, you name it, man. I had 40 songs to learn, I learned them. Yeah, you did. And I came in and sat down and you said, okay, well, that moment right there, I learned just about everything that I learned from the business side of music to the practice room to the professionalism, a lot of it, you know, came from your teachers, man. So I just want to tell you I love you, bro. 
I appreciate you, man. Well, thank you. I don't know how accurate that is, but, <laughs> but thank you. It's on, brother. It's yeah. right on, man. But, you know, it's uh, speaking been of, fun. Speaking of the fun, man, uh, what were some of your uh, exciting, funny, memorable moments that we've had in Talks to Costco over the past, say, 40 years? Well, first, you have to remember that I'm old. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, the mind gets a, a little fuzzy. And plus, while everybody else was running around having fun, I was You're... the one winding cables and loading the truck. So, yep. I do uh, remember, yep. Yeah, that's that's the reason, you know, I have the people skills I have today. So uh, I, I remember because we played either evening news or sports page. I mean, it gets it lost in which, which, you know, came first, which the chicken time, or the yeah. egg. But we played there twice a month for, what, a couple, three years or whatever it was. We were in there all the time. Yep. And uh, had a lot of good times in there. And uh, I remember one time in particular, somebody hit a friend of yours, I want to say with a beer mug or something. Oh, he did. It smashed him oh, up wow. against the side of the face. Next thing you know, here comes Charlie Smith over the drum, <laughs> out into the audience, mid-song. Oh, you know, hey, you know, we're playing drums raw flying singing. everywhere. Yeah, drums flying everywhere. It yep. looked like Keith Moon had exploded behind the drum kit. <laughs> you know, we're... We're playing, and it's like, where the fuck is he going? You know? and anyway, that lasted a couple of minutes. Order was restored to the universe, and we, we got back to, to playing. And I remember well, because David used to bring Roz. Oh, my gosh. He had, gosh. A, like, she was, what, 10 or 12 foot? Yeah, uh, that he 12 had. foot. Something like that. Python. Anyway, yeah, python, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Roz was a very friendly snake. I mean, David would have her, you know, when we were doing... I forget what song it was, but anyway, Roz would come over and lay her head on my shoulder and just kind of sit there. You know, <laughs> and uh, I remember that oh well. God, and uh, forget it. I remember when we opened for Survivor that uh, the rest of the band, they were all great guys, and the singer was a little prima donna. He didn't want to be, you know, hang with the commoners. Oh, yeah. But uh, that was fun. Uh, also remember playing under the Hyatt. Oh, my gosh. Long years ago on St. Patrick's Day, and uh, before they glassed in the bottom of the Hyatt, and we were there, and it was, what, crowd like seven, 8,000 people 8, or whatever. I That's mean, just in the front. People, right there, as, yeah. as far crazy. as you could see, you know, first song. First song. Detroit to Rock City by to, Kiss. We oh go my to God. take off. You know, I mean, I think it was Jay Sinclair that did the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, talk to Oscar and all this, that, and the other, and we go to hit the song. And Charlie Smith went away. No drums. And, you know, and we're kind of standing there, you know, you, your eyes get real big and all these visions flash through your head of, you know, what could have possibly happened. And oh, man. turn around, he's just not there. His stool had broken and come out from under him. <laughs> Only his ass he went. And uh, oh, my God. Jay Sinclair was kind enough to scoop him up and put him back up there. He got back in there, didn't miss a stroke. So, yep, it was great. It was crazy. He yeah. actually put a towel up on it because I had ripped yeah. my skin and everything. I didn't so know what bleeding. happened. I just knew we started the song and all of a sudden we had no drums. And, uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, that was funny. I mean, too many other things that just kind of fade from memory, you know. Uh, I remember playing in Barnwell, South Carolina. Oh, the yeah. Skydivers Convention. Yeah, that was fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Pouring down, thunderstorming rain. Yes. About 40 degrees outside. Yes. And uh, you have an issue. Yeah. I, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about it? We uh, we had borrowed Paul Mazo's B-Rig mm -hmm. to play that show. And uh, we were putting speaker cabinets up when we were getting set up in the hangar. And one of the casters... I'm going to put the speaker cabinets up, pinch the end of my finger right here off. Yeah, I saw it. I had a chunk, like, gone. Now, you think about it, if you're a guitar player, you know that missing parts of your finger is not conducive to uh, uh, playing well. So anyway, I'm bleeding, and Mike Major, our bass player at the time, for, well, for many years, uh, he's a diver, commercial diver by trade, he had some new skin, so I built a fingertip out of new skin. I remember his playing And it lasted day, about almost a set. 
Mm -hmm. before it came out and then I had blood just all over my guitar yep. it was everywhere of course I've done that many times now I've I'm a mechanic by necessity not by trade but uh, I have injured my hands pretty bad so many times over the years that uh, it, it's for me it's led to a loss of pit control and speed I've filleted this finger on both sides so that's why I hold a pick like this I can't I can't hold on to it it's yeah. just Next thing I know, it's gone. Tried taping it to my finger. That doesn't work either. So uh, we played Memories over on Skidaway, I believe it was, one night. And we loaded up and we're gone. And David Steinhauser, our singer, walks outside and somebody meets him around the corner and puts a gun to his head and he got robbed. Oh, uh, my and, uh, gosh, yeah, Steve. Yeah. I forgot so about that. We've bro. had some fun times. That there. just blew me away. I, uh, I completely 100% forgot about that. There was a club that was on Montgomery Crossroads. Can't recall the that name. That was of the Dave club. Shepherd's club. That was Mug Shots. Was it? We had our CD party, release party there. That's where yep. we, that's where some drunk girl decided that uh, she was going to rename the band. And because uh, she called us, she said, Y'all ain't nothing but a bunch of scuzzy country fuckers. <laughs> I remember. And uh, to this yep. day, we want to change the name of the man to, you know, Scuzzy Country. So, uh, <laughs> I like Toxic Oscar. That, I think it's got a certain ring to it. Do you remember how we got Toxic yes, Oscar's name? Yes, I do. In the uh, aquarium at uh, David's? Yeah. Uh, we were looking for a new name of the band uh, when Jimbo and Jerry came on because it was no longer Oz. No, we wanted to you know, Start fresh. change the identity. And... Uh, so we had a list of names, and some of them were just, you know, like Marvin Gaye plus five. And uh, David, our singer, and both, and he and Dwayne Anderson, who was our sound guy at the time. Yep, heavy D. Uh, they were all big into fish and reptiles, especially David. He still is. Mm -hmm. But uh, Dwayne had a huge Oscar, just huge. You know, I mean, it was like this wide, you know, fish like this. And he had fin rod which is a disease they get. Some people call it ick or whatever, but David and Dwayne were talking about, well, you got, yeah, you got a toxic Oscar. And uh, somebody said, well, hey, there's a name for a band. <laughs> That's and somehow it stuck. I, you know, yep. I, it, it still bewilders me, but that, you know, I, I just played for the band. I, I don't, you know. It's been, uh, it's been around since 1990. 80, 89, 90. 89, 90. 89, yep. 90, yeah. Osna ended in 89, and we kind of fumbled around a little bit. Uh, our buddy, our producer, the one and only Eddie Rocks. Eddie Rocks. Uh, came in and With a voice. Year? Uh, it was about 96. 96. David Steinhauser decided he was going to retire uh, in 95. And left the band, and we looked around um, for a singer. I mean, I sing, but I don't have the the voice to pull off, you know, lead vocals and and yeah. play at the same time. I'm not that bright, so uh, we looked around, and I don't recall exactly how we were led to you. Was we went it you? to high school together? You? Yep. Okay. All right. I called him. Yep. And uh, we wrote a lot. Uh, Eddie came into the band. Uh, it was like 96, I want to say. Somewhere in that position. And uh, yeah. wrote a lot of good songs. Eddie's an excellent songwriter, uh, lyricist, uh, keyboard player, just all around bright guy. Amazing. And yeah. uh, I was going through some some. CDs the other day and ran across some stuff that we had done long years ago His with vocals. Eddie singing and you listen to it and you go, damn, that was good. That boy can sing. <laughs> yeah, boy, that boy can go. I remember you know? our first and, uh, show, man, he did at uh, Hilton Head when we played Club Life together. Yeah. I think that uh, that was one of the most amazing shows. I mean, he really put on, he, he oh, yeah. click, click, boom. We opened up with click, yeah. click, boom and yeah. here he is. His voice is uh, like Michael Jackson is, you know, just yeah. really got soulful to it. And he hits uh, Click, Click, Boom by Saliva and just nails it, man. Well, I mean, nuts Eddie is, is surprising in the fact that you look at him and, you know, none of us are like, you know, giants or anything like that. But Eddie was shorter than the rest of mm -hmm. And, you know, this, this guy comes out and 
then this voice comes flying from out nowhere, just you know, and pins you against the wall, and you're like, "Holy sheep shit!" Yep. And uh, anyway, boy can it worked. It worked well for mm. until about oh three was it? Is that yeah? Oh one oh two. Some somewhere in there, in and uh, yeah. you moved far, far away to a land island paradise, and uh, we quit playing uh, for a while. Um, Several years, almost eight years. Eight years, I think six, eight, about eight years. Six to eight years, yeah. And uh, the uh, we used to practice in the, like a mobile home that was behind my house. I lived in a log cabin for like twenty six years that mm -hmm. my grandfather had built. And uh, at any rate, the after Eddie left, I had uh, I, I built a house in, up on the property in oh one. And we just we quit playing, and it wasn't until the the trailer that I had for the practice area had just become so dilapidated it was just, it was just unusable. And uh, so anyway, I got rid of that, uh, and I was looking around. I wasn't playing there for a long time. I played with a couple of different people just for something to do. I mean, I still played at home, but. Uh, wasn't concerned about a band or uh, any of that, you know. I was kind of burned on it, and uh, then I ran across a uh, a portable classroom because uh, I I needed to tear down the the log cabin. It was in such a state of disrepair. I tried to save it, but I couldn't. And uh, ran across this portable classroom. This guy had the Buf Buford Jasper School System had several of them. So I bought that. Uh, it's a two-piece, you know, wood construction built like a tank, whatever. Uh, had to tear down the cabin, and that's I put the studio where the cabin was, and uh, that was in '11. And I said, "Well, I got this building. I might as well put the band back together." So I started, <laughs> yeah, you know, get the band back. <laughs> we're on a mission from God. We're going to put the band back together. It's going to happen. So you know, I I, I called. You know, of course, Will was in, and uh, called Mike Major, he was in. Called Brian, and he kind of hem and hawed, and then he came, we came, he came up, we played together, and he was like, okay, yeah, well, you know, we'll do this again. Uh, and we Is didn't that have, when we got Mike Schultz? Yes, we didn't have got, a singer. Yeah. And we looked around, and Mike knew, uh, Mike Major knew this guy over in Bluffton Hilton Head, where Mike lives, uh, named Mike Schultz. We tried with who's got an excellent voice uh but things just didn't things just didn't go well uh, I, you know we we tried and he was there a, a little over a year i guess mm -hmm. and uh for whatever reason uh, you know either it you just know, didn't it, pan out it basically. didn't pan out either yeah. you know we weren't for him or he wasn't for us or whatever whatever the the thing was it didn't work out so we fished around some more Tried a couple of people, didn't work out. Uh, about that time, Mike Major left. Yeah. And uh, I don't recall what the reason was at the time. But anyway, I mean, Mike and I are still good friends and always will be. But, you know, he decided he was going to leave. So now we're looking for a bass player, too. And we tried a number of folks uh, and wound up with a fellow named Eddie Stewart. Uh, who just from the first night he showed up, I mean, he, he fit in like a glove. He man. did. I mean, uh, he started playing and, uh, you know, his tone, it was just, like, oh, well, that's the guy, you know. And uh, as far as singers, I saw some posts on Facebook of my old drummer, which is Randy, Randy Clark, yep. had put some things on of him singing different songs, whatever he had recorded with his. You know, some beautiful tracks. gospel stuff and too. He had some good gospel stuff, but he did uh, "Faithfully" by Journey, and uh, he just, you know, smack knocked it out of the park. And I was like, "Damn, that boy can sing!" So I called him and uh, it, yeah, asked him, you know, if he'd be interested, and he was. And you know, the rest is history. He's still there. So that's. Uh, uh, yeah, give our, me the lineup. The lineup. We have our new guitar player, Wiley Congdon. Mm-hmm. Who's just wonderful, 
Eddie Stewart on bass, Glenn Smith on drums, who's been back with us again now for about eight years. Which actually is the other drummer, uh, the drummer for uh, his other high, band, also High Velocity. High Velocity, the drummer right. for High Velocity, mm -hmm. Ray Tomasino and, and Ronnie Abel and Steve Clark. Uh, uh, Will Griffiths, is, who's been with me since Hitler was a road guard. Lionel Orlando. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we have a new name for him now. What is it? Luis. Who? Luis. Luis? Luis. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, there's a story behind that too. Anyway, myself and of course Randy singing lead and I sing harmony and Glenn does a little bit of vocals. Wiley does a little bit of vocals as well. Wiley has an excellent voice, which you will hear uh, at our upcoming show. So Steve, man, uh, tell me a little bit about your influences. What do you like to play? Well, of course, I'm a, I'm a rocker, uh, but strangely enough, I love classical music. Uh, took piano as a child uh, for like six, seven years, didn't learn a damn thing. <laughs> uh, teacher would play it and I would memorize it. Come back and play it, get my gold star, turn the page. Didn't learn a damn thing. Played French horn in high school. Uh, was good at that. Uh, and then, like I said, I started playing guitar when I was 18, but I've always been a, a rocker. Uh, while everybody else was listening to Southern Rock, Skinner, what have you, I was listening to Yes. Uh, Todd Rundgren was a huge, uh, made a huge Im impression on me. Just Pink Floyd, of course, uh, later Rush. And I still enjoy playing all those things. As a band, we do a lot of Rush. We do mm -hmm. a lot of Led Zeppelin, of course. We do uh, a, a lot of Pink Floyd and some just various other scattered things that we do simply because we enjoy playing it. Yeah. Not because anybody says, oh, well, you ought to play this. No, we, we do it because we enjoy playing that. That's awesome. And, you know, we've never been a top 40 band or anything like that. But, yeah, my influences run the gamut i mean i can sit and listen to strange as it sounds i'll listen to you know npr classical hour all day <laughs> i just love it and, I, re uh, I remember you loving uh actually i remember you loving collective soul i remember you liked them collective a lot at one time good. i like a number of their songs yeah. uh foo fighters foo fighters i absolutely love strangely enough lady gaga oh wow i didn't She's, know that She's just the real deal. I mean, in a in an age of you know, uh, music put together with a keyboard that has three notes, you know, and that's that's supposed to be an artist, uh, you know. And I'm old school in that. I I come from the train of thought of of live music versus what most music is today, and it's not to denigrate that, but music today is done on a computer screen. Yeah, it's and completely changed. I mean, there is, I mean, there's still instruments involved, and you, you have to put, you know, the song has to be what is played from point A to point B, still has to be there, but it, it is corrected, uh, things like auto-tune and, 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 this, that, and the other, Pro Tools and everything was a big boon to recording. It's no longer, you know, a live band in a studio, turn it on, roll tape, and everybody play. Th those days are long, long, long gone. Yeah. Uh, it's all done digitally, and you can fix damn near anything. Uh, there's, you know, whether you love today's music or hate today's music, uh, it has gone to another level. Yeah, completely Simply switched. from going to, and at some point it may come back. Uh, look at, uh, you know, the medium of, of which what you used to buy. It started off, you know, you were buying Beatles 45s, yeah. you know, on vinyl. Yep. And, you know, then you had the 12 albums. inch. And then next thing you know, it was eight track, man. God, you got to yep. have an eight track, you know, or reel to reel, or whatever. Then the cassette came along, mm -hmm. and then CD, and now you know, and then flash drives, MP3, and what have you. And now look what's making a comeback: vinyl, because the sound quality is just different now. There's nothing to me personally like the old school vinyl. 
I mean, well, it's yeah. raw. It's just raw sound. I don't even have a record player anymore, but uh, Me either, I've but got I... a stack of albums like this, but I've got nothing to play them on. But music will continue to evolve. Uh, you know, there's an audience for everything. And what I think, or, you know, what excites me or what I like to listen to doesn't mean a thing to the next fellow down the street. He may like something totally different. And I am of the age that I, I think that we had it better I do too. than anybody else as far as the live music. Uh, I mean, there will never be another Led Zeppelin uh there are, uh, you know, Pink Floyd, whatever. There are bands out there, Foo Fighters, that carry on the, tra the tradition. And, uh, you know, uh, bands like Greta Van Fleet. Greta, they're, they're awesome. Uh, they, they were touted as the next Led Zeppelin. Now, they're great. They're not Led Zeppelin, but yep. they're great. Mm -hmm. And there's a number of other bands, uh, Winery Dogs, as far as progressive metal type uh, stuff that's just on the next level but uh, uh you know the, the future of music will continue to evolve with me or without me you know what i like personally means nothing to the next fellow so i mean to each his own and everybody has different tastes and uh that's where the art of music what, what, comes in, man. Yeah, I know. You what, know float, what? what floats my boat, you know, may leave somebody else high and dry. So, you got it. Uh, Coming up. Yes, sir. We uh, September 9th at Victory, at Victory North, North, North on uh, Victory Drive. We have uh, never played there before. I understand it is just a first-class venue with a first-class stage and a first-class sound system. I guess we'll find out. Oh, uh, yes, you will. Uh, Unbelievable, bro. We'll be test driving our, our new lead guitar player. Uh, and uh, we haven't played out in a couple of years. We, you know, we've had some difficulty uh, over the past couple of years. That, uh, we're starting to find our way out of the wilderness again. And uh, so please, everybody, come and support us. Support all your local musicians in Savannah. Uh, live music venues are and few between nowadays that's sad to say but uh, please come out and support us we'd love to see everybody Saturday September 9th at Victory North you got it and another thing um, we're gonna get you in coach's corner here coming up sometime September October as soon as we can get you guys a date set that everybody can get together yeah want you at coaches yeah we corner. love coaches coaches is always fun we always have a big time they have been coaches. a big support to, to Local and we always music have a period. good crowd. You know, the, we love the people. We, I mean, you know, we we've been around so long. Everybody knows us. Oh you know? yeah, and we just always have a big. T it's just a big party. We always have a good time there. Love the venue. Uh, can't wait to go back. Can't wait to see you. Well, brother, just want to tell you we love you. Uh, just been an awesome time sitting here chatting with Had you. Had fun. Yeah, me too, brother. I and you're gonna have much. to come. No, you don't, man. You're gonna have to come back again. Yes, sir. You know, before we can't do it again. So. I might live that long. I don't know. Yeah. still young. So. Peace and love, my brother. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Prescott.